Jason, I'm going to be leading a tour today, a Jane's Walk about graffiti in Toronto. Uh, I've got my trusty little spray can here. On the walk, when you hear me shake it, it means that I have something to say. And I'll need you to gather around me. We're a very large group, so you just need to gather around me where you can see me and where you can hear me. Where we're going to be walking, there's going to be less traffic. We're going to be in back alleys. So you'll be able to hear me easier than you will right now. So. Don't worry about being able to hear me. I also have a theater background and I can project fairly well. So hopefully you guys all are able to hear uh, what I can say. Graffiti is a very contentious issue here in Toronto. It's a hot topic. I've been studying graffiti from an academic perspective, um, sort of casually for about two years now. I've been speaking with graffiti artists. I've been speaking with police officers. I've been speaking with people at City Hall about graffiti. So I like to think that I've got a pretty rounded general perspective on graffiti and its place here in the city. I'm not a graffiti artist. I just want to be clear on that. I don't go around at night in alleys and do art, but I am a trained artist. Um, I studied visual arts, fine arts in university, so I've come to this with an academic arts perspective, as well as I, I majored in anthropology. So where anthropology, art, culture, where it comes together, that's what I'm really interested in. So, this is right up my alley. I mean, I stopped you guys here to show off uh, an organization that I think is, is pretty fantastic. They're called Manifesto. They organize a hip-hop street culture festival every year, and this is uh, their headquarters. The mural that's on the side of the building here was done by Elixir. Does this work look familiar? If you saw the hug tree at the very beginning, it's the same guy. Um, Elixir was also featured in a Molson M commercial. Uh, it showed him working on this giant, you know, like building size piece in that uh, in that commercial. Like line up the turn, right? Um, like you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It was it was like right there, like where people were lined up. Are you standing biking? Uh, he's biking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Uh, cool. What we're looking at here is the start of Rush Lane, which is known uh, unofficially as Graffiti Alley. This is one of uh, a few hot spots in Toronto for graffiti artists to work. Another really, really good one, if you feel like taking a bit of a subway trip, is called the Keel Wall. Alex,
of things that I wanted to point out here. There is a difference between street art or street artists and graffiti artists. Street artists do street art. Graffiti artists do. Dead Boy does the essentials. He does Robin's work, flipping the bird. He does Stephen Harper flipping the bird. Uh, and I'm not talking about the yellow birds, uh, like the one up there. The graffiti, he's not much below it. So he does the yellow birds up here. north of Queen and we'll start heading back towards Spadina. hideout here was done by one of my favorite graffiti artists who we actually passed working in the alley there. Uh, he goes by the name Uber. That was Uber. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't but uh, what he was doing there in the alley was a memorial piece for uh, Adam Yock or MCA. He's one of the Beastie Boys. So one of the most like best known popular hip hop acts ever. Um, uh, MCA died of, after a three year battle with cancer. And so he, he meant a lot to people in the graffiti and like hip hop community. Uh, so that's what he was working on there was a memorial piece. Now usually when I see him working, he's wearing a mask uh, and goggles and you know, usually a baseball cap and a hoodie and he was wearing gloves. Um, so it's kind of unusual to see him not, uh, not protected, but normally when graffiti artists, especially the best ones, are working, they'll, they'll guard their health, because these fumes are not very good for you, uh, despite what the movies might have you believe. Um, uh, very unhealthy to inhale this, even skin contact, not the greatest idea. So a lot of graffiti artists will wear latex gloves, so that they have, uh, like, good feeling on the nozzle, but, uh, uh, there's even some graffiti artists that have been painting for decades that now have health problems, respiratory problems, from working in closed spaces with spray cans. So here today it's kind of breezy, it's, you know, we're outdoors, not that risky, but still, his mother would probably be not very impressed with him not wearing a mask. Um, 
This is one of my favorite pieces. I get a chuckle out of this uh, all the time. Jailbirds. Uh, uh, I love his stuff because it's got a sense of humor. It's very uh, quirky and cartoony. The Jimi Hendrix there, he's done his research. Uh, if you know Jimi Hendrix, he played the guitar left-handed, but he didn't string it for the left hand. He just simply flipped the guitar upside down. So people that don't do their research, if they're doing a painting of Jimi Hendrix, they might get the guitar wrong. And I've seen that done before. But here, uh, he's got it bang on. So we're going to walk along here. There's uh, another Dead Boy piece that you're going to see that's been painted over. See if you can spot it. It's one of, I think it's Rob Ford who's flipping the bird.